Today is Tuesday, November 21st. It's 1.51 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, before I share with you all the word uh, that the Lord just gave me, he wants me to read from Exodus chapter 12, verses uh, 21 to 23. Then Moses called all the elders of Israel and said to them, Go and select lambs for yourself according to your clans and kill the Passover lamb. Take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and touch the lintel and the two doorposts with the blood that is in the basin. None of you shall go out of the door of his house until morning, for the Lord will pass through to strike the Egyptians. And when he sees the blood on the lintel and on the two doorposts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not allow the destroyer to enter your houses to strike you. I'm going to encourage you like I do um, each and every time. The Bible tells us that we are to test every spirit. So you're not to take my word for it. This is something that I encourage you to take back to the Lord in your own personal prayer time when you're meditating on his holy word day and night and ask him to confirm or deny uh, the words that were spoken today. And once he has confirmed, if he has confirmed, then ask him for uh, clarification. Does this apply to me, Lord? And if it does, what do I need to do um, to make things right? He wants me to title this word, I will not pass over. Hear ye the word of the Lord, O hard-hearted and rebellious people. Will you continue to defy me and live you will not. You are storing up wrath for yourselves because of your hard-hearted rebellion. Your stony, stubborn hearts are refusing to yield. It is not my desire that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But why will you die, O Israel? I do not enjoy seeing you die. Those who obey my commands prove their love for me through their conduct. They are ruled by my spirit. It is clear who rules over you. Those of you who call good evil and evil good, those of you who erect idols all over the land, if depravity is what you are choosing, you will receive it in full measure. Your conscience is seared as with a hot iron. Those of you who justify ruthlessness and brutality will be on the receiving end of it. Those of you who celebrate and parade around a sexually immoral lifestyle will have your fill of it. When your bodies are sold into slavery, you will live and breathe your immorality. What once tasted so sweet will turn to gravel in your mouths. Adulterous husbands and wives who have dishonored your spouses by your repetitious infidelity. I have seen it all and now is the time for recompense. What you have sown you shall surely reap. If you do not repent, turn to me and live. You may think my words are harsh or unloving, but it is you who lacks the ability to love. I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have called you many times, reached out my arms to you, extending my grace in a desperate plea for you to admit your wrongs, acknowledge your guilt, humble yourselves under my mighty hand, and I would give you a new heart, renew a steadfast spirit within you. I promise to cleanse you of all unrighteousness and adopt you as my own. I promise you healing and deliverance, freedom from your captivity, peace for your troubled minds, rest for your weary souls. I paid the price for your sin in full, and yet you refused to accept the gift I sacrificed my life to give you. Your punishment is just. For I have not come to call the righteous but sinners to repentance. 
Yet even my kindnesses that are meant to draw you to repentance, you have cast behind you as refuse. I have been extremely patient with you, but time is running out for many of you. Many of you make plans weeks, even months in advance, but how can you be so sure, so certain of the time you have left? It is already written in my book when your life will come to a close, but death is not the end, and you do not only live once. Your soul belongs to me. It will return to me when you die. If you reject me during your life on the earth and you die in your sin, the wages of sin is death. You will be separated from me eternally. You will be tormented day and night by Satan and his angels. I am a merciful God. They will show you none. There is no mercy in hell. I, the Lord, have spoken. He wants me to read all of the confirmations that he provided thereafter. Um, he just literally led me from one chapter to another um, and pointed out the scriptures and said that one there, that one there. Sometimes he would even give me a word to correlate um, with what he spoke about here. The first one is First Chronicles chapter 16, verses 14 to 16. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. Remember his covenant forever, the word that he commanded for a thousand generations, the covenant that he made with Abraham, his sworn promise to Isaac. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 16, circumcise therefore the foreskin of your heart and be no longer stubborn. For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, the great, mighty, and awesome God who is not partial and takes no bribe. Numbers 25, forgive me, I did not write down the verse. While Israel lived in Shittim, the people began to whore with the daughters of Moab. These invited the people to the sacrifices of their gods, and the people ate and bowed down to their gods. So Israel yoked himself to Baal of Peor, and the anger, the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. First Kings chapter 18 verse 21. And Elijah came near to all the people and said, How long will you go limping between two different opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people did not answer him a word. First Samuel chapter 15 verses 22 to 23. And Samuel said, has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to listen than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of divination and presumption is as iniquity and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected you from being king. I heard the words Genesis and the blood of Abel. So I went to that part in Genesis and it took me to this verse. Then the Lord said to Cain, where is Abel, your brother? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And the Lord said, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying out to me from the ground. He told me to stay in Genesis and then led me to where Joseph's, Joseph's brothers were about to leave him for dead and brought me to this verse. Then Judah said to his brothers, what profit is it if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and let not our hand be upon him. For he is our brother, our own flesh, and his brothers listened to him. Then Midianite traders passed by, and they drew Joseph up and lifted him out of the pit and sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 shekels of silver. Isaiah 6, 9. And he said, Go and say to these people, Keep on hearing, but do not understand. Keep on seeing, but do not perceive. Make the heart 
of this people dull in their ears heavy and blind their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and turn and be healed. <clears throat> 